Good morning, Gateway. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let's pray together. Lord God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be holy and acceptable unto you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Friends, we are in the process of establishing how it is that we can be more than conquerors. As the Word of God tells us, the directive Paul gives us is from our text from last week in Romans chapter 8, specifically verses 5 and 6, where he says, Those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. And to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Praise God. Robert Pace then gave us some spiritual principles of thinking with which to set our minds and uh, in order that we may be not just conquerors but more than conquerors. And the first principle uh, he taught us that we are to embrace was, is to know who you are in Christ. For us to be more than conquerors, we need to have a good self-image. We need to not only accept ourselves, believe in ourselves, indeed love ourselves. Because God, in and through Christ Jesus, does accept us, believe in us, and love us. Secondly, for us to be more than conquerors, the second principle of living, of life, of setting our, our minds to is that we are to know whose we are, who we belong to. And as Christians, we established or re-established that we belong to Father God Almighty, as revealed in and through His Son, Jesus the Christ. You and I are children of the living God. We are King's kids. And knowing that, helps instill in us a victorious attitude, mindset, a confidence based upon our belonging, which in turn instills within us a sense of purpose, the fact that our lives have meaning and significance. But there is another principle of thinking we are to embrace and apply. Together with knowing who we are and whose we are, to be more than conquerors. And that is to know who won. Someone once wrote this. Stay faithful to God, because I've read the end of the book. We win. <laughs> Isn't that great? Perhaps you've heard that before. However, there is something better than reading to the end of the book to discover who wins. For Christians, friends, the truth is, the Bible in fact reveals who won this match of life long before the end of the book. In Genesis chapter 1, God created the heavens and the earth. In Genesis chapter 2, God created man. In Genesis chapter 3, man disobeyed and fell into sin. And before you can turn the page to Genesis chapter 4, God promises to crush the head of the devil. 
And in Genesis 3.15, we read, And provide victory for the sons of men. Thus, friends, as early on as in Genesis 3, we read the proclamation that we win. And the theme continues throughout the Bible. God has repeatedly decreed victory over the life of every believer. Moses said in Deuteronomy 20 verse 4, For the Lord your God is He who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you victory. Friends, notice what Jesus said in John 16 verse 33. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. 1 John 5, 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Friend, that's worth reading again. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. But it doesn't stop there. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to our text of Romans 8, uh, verses 35 to 39. And let me remind you, or rather God remind us thus. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No. In all of these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. What a wonderful passage of Scripture, one worth memorizing. Christ defeated the enemy of our soul on the cross and gave us the victory 2,000 plus years ago. Now friends, what exactly is the meaning of more than conquerors. Isn't it enough just to be a conqueror? I think it's great to be a conqueror, but Paul said we are more than conquerors. What does it mean to be more than a conqueror? Before a sporting match begins and before the two opposing teams take to the field, there is always the chance, um, apart from a draw, of course, that one team will lose. Well, by definition, one team will lose. And one team will win, will be the victor. One team will eventually conquer, even though they enter the context, uh, sorry, the, 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 the contest, with a chance of being defeated. But when Paul said Christians are more than conquerors, he meant with Christ on their side. It was a fate accompanied. Even before the contest against Satan begins, quote, we are more than conquerors already. We don't have to wait for the final whistle or the next point to be scored to know who wins. Christ has already conquered the enemy of our souls. Amen. Saints of God, this is what is meant to live victoriously in and through Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we should know it and we should stand firm in this realization. In fact, it needs to be more than that. It needs to be a revelation that touches us in the deep essence of our, of our spirit. And that's the next point uh, I want to make. The fourth principle to live by. If we know who we are, if we know whose we are, and if we know who won the battle, then it makes sense to take courage and expect victory in our lives. David said in Psalm 27 verse 13, I believe and I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of of the living, meaning now. Here's a question for you to ponder 
this week. Is that how you and I live? Do you, like David, believe, express faith, and so expectantly look to see the goodness of the Lord operating in your life? Do you expect to be the head and not the tail? Do you expect to be at the top, on top, and not at the bottom? Or are you trying to desperately snatch a little bit of victory from the jaws of defeat? Remember, friends, the scripture, as a man thinketh, so is he. I want you to turn with me, if you can, to a familiar passage of Scripture in Numbers chapter 13 in the Old Testament. And it deals with, with Israel's spying out the land, the promised land of Canaan. God had promised them not too long after they left Egypt and passed through the Dead Sea. Moses sent twelve of the best men, the choice men of Israel, to spy out the land of Canaan and to bring back a report. Let's pick up the story uh, in verse 25. At the end of 40 days, they returned from spying out the land. And they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told Moses, we came to the land to which you sent us. It does flow with milk and honey and this is its fruit. However, verse 28, the people who dwell in the land are strong and the cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. And that's a reference to giants. The Amaleks dwell in the land of the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the hill country, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, along the Jordan. But then Caleb, in verse 30, interrupts, because he can see where this is going, and the verse says, He quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it. For if, sorry, and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. The voice of faith, of belief. Then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. Verse 32. So, they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out. This good land flowing with milk and honey that God had promised them, they now declared bad. Saying, the land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are of great height, are giants. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, and we, and we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers. What does that tell you about their state of mind? What are they setting their minds upon if they are deeming themselves like grasshoppers? And so too we seemed to them. We seemed small and weak and insignificant to them. And really what they were saying was, we, we agree, we accept that. Friends, what a sad commentary on these leaders of Israel. 
Did you notice that all 12 men were sent to the same place and saw the same stuff? They were all sent with the same commission. They were all sent with the same exhortation, quote, to be of good courage. But all did not return with the same report. Ten of the twelve returned with a bad report of the land they spied out. Friends, please take note that they did not return with a false report. Because what these ten men reported was true. Christians are realists. We don't hide our heads in the sand. We have our feet planted firmly on the sand and our heads up and we acknowledge that which there is. The land of Canaan was infested with giants. The inhabitants were strong. Its cities were fortresses. It's what these ten men reported next that was bad. They said in verse 31, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. Friends, how many times have we, have you, I know I have, not said that? As if there is no God, that he did not send Jesus, who did not die on the cross of Calvary, was not raised from the dead victorious over sin, death and evil, did not ascend to God the Father Almighty's right hand, glorified Lord of Lords and King of Kings, with all powers and principalities his footstool, did not receive from the Father the promised blessed Holy Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same power and send him down to us, to be with us, more so to be in us and greater in us than all else, but left us, abandoned us, small, weak and alone, not fighting the good fight of faith because we have none, no hope, having already lost the battle in our minds and so already having lost the war and so not able to go up against anyone or anything and take our stand because quote they the situation the circumstances out there are stronger and bigger than us we say than we are friends what we are god has promised God promised them, as his children, victory. They were the king's kids, the king almighty's, after all. And he had gone before them, and he'd led them in triumphal procession out of Egypt. He split the Red Sea for them. He drowned Pharaoh's army for them. And they still confessed defeat. And subsequently, because the Israelites accepted the report of the ten spies, it took Moses 40 years to get them back to the edge of the promised land. God cursed Israel one year for every day, the 40 days, that the spies were in Canaan and so they wandered around the desert that generation did for 40 years and then no one 20 years of age and older made it out of the wilderness they died short of the promised land and so some never made it at all friends in conclusion 
The good news of Jesus Christ is that you and I do not need to live that way. We, the king's kids, can live in victory. Already assured, we can have the victory that Joshua and Caleb of the twelve had brought back because of where they had set their minds as opposed to the other ten, which was on God and their trust and their belief in Him who is stronger than all or anything else. They were the only two adults that made it into Canaan alive once this bad report of a lack of belief and trust and faith was given to Moses and Israel. Why were they the only two to make it? Friends, it's because, again, they believed in God, but not just believed, they believed in what they believed. They acted upon their faith and indeed God's promises that he was greater, much greater, the greatest in fact than any giant of a circumstance, situation, person or even the devil himself. Christian, don't ever let anything or anybody, let alone even Satan himself, conquer the domain of your mind and take over the control tower of your life and your living, contrary to what is stated in the Word of God. Rather, fill your mind with the Word of God, the truth already declared and established. Fill your mind. Have the word of God dwell in you richly, says the word of God of itself. Fill your soul with trust. Fill your heart with faith in God Almighty, who so loved you and I, that he gave up his one and only son for you and I. And friends, he did that to hell and back. So, as for you and I, to take courage. Why? Because we can. Why? Because Jesus on the cross said, it is done. It is finished. It has been accomplished. Victory has been achieved for the sons of man. As he leads you and I, in a triumphal procession in Christ into the promised land and so being a conqueror no more than a conqueror amen God bless you let's pray together Lord God we thank you that the victory is assured Lord we know there are still skirmishes there are still mop-up operations before the final battle and the war is won. But Lord, we know that it's already won. And that we're living between the already and the not yet of that final whistle on earth. That will usher us into the fullness of that victory. And Lord, I pray that while we are tempted, while we are Lord, opposed while we ourselves sometimes lack. Lord Jesus, forgive us and help us not look to what is seen, but to lift our heads, our eyes of faith, and look to you, Lord, and that which is unseen, but has already been revealed to those who choose to look. Lord, to choose to look as Joshua and Caleb did, with eyes of faith and see the victory and so declare our God is greater and Lord I pray that everyone listening this morning 
Lord, if need be, we'll confess and repent. Lord, because you forgive. And not only forgive, but Lord, you restore. You lift up the humble and restore us to that place of being children of the living God. Princes and princesses, living in the victory already achieved for us by our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God the Father, who does sit with all the powers and principalities at his footstool, and has already sent to us the blessed Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised you from the dead, Lord Jesus, abides in each of us. And Lord, you said to the disciples in the confines of the flesh while you dwelt amongst us, yes, those were great things you did, but the time is coming when you will do even greater. And so, Lord, give us and grant us that faith to understand, to believe, Lord, to be convicted in our spirits that our God reigns, that our God is alive, and that we are His, and Lord, that you are not just with us, but in us, leading us. In triumphal procession. Help us set our minds on such and then Lord discover that yes indeed we are conquerors, more than conquerors, in Christ Jesus our Lord and Saviour. In his name we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.